you know, we do a lot of live music here, open mics and Friday and Saturdays we have acoustic music. And we were looking for something uh, a little different where number one, it didn't cost me a lot of money. Uh, we could get in relatively inexpensive, buy a good turntable and uh, hire a facilitator to do it, but also have a, um, a variety of music as opposed to maybe just one single singer, songwriter, you know, that all just sang a certain you know, genre so we could really mix it up. And the open mic had been incredibly successful for two years, so just packed a lot of things. So we were wanting to do that, but do something a little simpler and, and kind of also trendy and cool. Um, and so I, I originally just started buying album covers for the wall as decoration. And I noticed people started talking about them and I was listening to conversations. There. I remember when I had that. And so we thought, well, let's just take it one step further and you know, buy some good albums, buy a turntable, old vintage speakers and just play it and do it the format kind of like an open mic. You know, you, and it seemed to have worked well. So originally, like I said, when we started, people would just take albums off the wall because they didn't know they could bring their own. And they come in, they get an album, they pick one, and then Dave, who is a facilitator, uh, it's like open mic, you get two songs, you know, as long as it's not in the God of the Vita or something, you know, extremely long. Uh, you get two tracks, I should say. And uh, he just plays them, and there's a sign-up sheet, and they go in order. So, and then the next person comes in and picks an album out. But uh, again, once people kind of caught on, they started bringing in, like, bags of albums, old ones, and very good. So it took us a couple months to get the word out and let people know, you know, what we were doing and that they could bring their own albums and play. So it, it was a little bit, yeah. I think third or fourth month in, there was a 17-year-old and her friend came in with their old classic albums. And then there's people, old guys like me, 55, 60. So it, it covers the whole spectrum. Every week there's kind of a story um, of the people that brought the albums, because that's what we do. We say, you know, if you want to tell a little story about the song, mm -hmm. you know, why you brought the album or a story about it. So we always had stories built in every night from the customers. And I don't remember anything specific, but, you know, we related to them all, whether, you know, we drove around the car at 16 is what we listened to. And, you know, so it, it was just, you know, independent things like that, really funny. We've been here six years. Um, the original owner, um, opened this as kind of a community gathering place. Uh, I was the GM, my wife and I bought it three years ago, and we definitely wanted to continue that community gathering place. Um, what we feel like we have brought in or changed a little bit was more the food. We really focus on um, local, clean food. You know, no preservatives, no colors, no nothing. Um, uh, source as much local as we can. Almost all of our meat's local. A lot of our produce is local. Um, bakery items are, are uh, local, what we don't bake here. Um, and in addition to that, so the food's super important to us. The other part I talked about earlier was the music. So the music, I think any gathering place, you know, people gather around and play music. And, and that's why we did the vinyl night, because we could also have, you know, that, that old community gathering, a bunch of old guys sitting around talking about the good old days. And so that just kind of took it to a different level. Um, so we're and we're continuing to do that and to change and to you know see what kind of what people want to what's fun and exciting and another reason to come here and eat and hang out.